Hi guys, Ree here from mummyof4.com. Oh, welcome back to my channel and another weekly vlog. I'm gonna start with some bit of a kind of sad news. I'm 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 not gonna dwell on it too much in the vlog, but I think social media sometimes can show you just the highlights of people's lives and it can be really difficult when watching when everyone is just showing you their highlight reel to then think, well, how come we're, I'm going through things? How come I'm struggling? So while it's not always appropriate to share everything on our lives, just because certain things you can't talk about, I do think it's important for everybody's mental health to let you know that life isn't always perfect. Um, so sadly, we have over the past week suffered a bereavement in the family. I shared just the most basic of details over on Instagram just to kind of explain really why I might seem a bit off and while I'm not going to go into the details about the family member because that's not my place to share I just wanted to let you know that it had happened and that as a family we've found it incredibly difficult this week I'm trying to I think I've left it till now to kind of talk about it on here because I don't want to fall to bits anyway um telling children was awful just having to break their little hearts it's just something you never want to have to do with a mum isn't it it's just it's just the worst it's one of those facts of life things facing the questions has been incredibly challenging because you want to be honest and truthful with your children but you don't want to share anything that will frighten them so I tried to explain that um, they asked what had happened with this family member and I said that they had been very ill and they said, but mummy, you were ill last week, what if something happens to you? And then it's trying to say, oh, well, no, that's not the same. So you don't want them to be frightened every time someone's ill, but then equally you need to explain. It's just, what a minefield. I just want you to know that for anyone that does have family members who are very, very poorly or at the end of their lives or you've recently lost family members, I just wanted to send that, like, that big hug out to you and and just say that that not everyone copes people might seem like they're coping but it's just like what you see on social media is the duck swimming on the water not the feet going underneath you know it's um so if you are struggling with anything really not not just grieving but don't look at social media and think you're seeing the whole picture because some things people choose not to share, some things it's not appropriate to share. And I just kind of wanted to put that out there um, just to kind of let you know what's going on, I guess, and and where we're at at the moment. It's been a challenge. Okay, um, I'm now going to go and get the children from school. Zara has got a dance practice tonight because she's got an exam coming up very soon. We're trying to keep routine as absolutely normal as possible um i felt it was important to tell the children when i had a period of time so i told them kind of straight after school when i got them home so i had all evening with them i, I didn't want to kind of tell them before school or anything but then the next day they did go into school and i felt that keeping their routine has been really important for them keeping those conversations open keeping the discussions open so they know they can talk to us and talk through it but also just keeping things normal and the teachers have said that they are doing really well just and seem quite happy in school which makes me happy i just i just want my children to be happy anyway it also looks like it's raining outside which which makes me less but um i am gonna go and get them now and then get zara off to her little dance lesson do you know what manages not to rain all day then the second it's time for school run it pours am i right so we got pretty soaps on school run and then zara's been to tap which you were doing so well. Mummy got to watch your practice session. We don't normally get to watch them. You're doing so well. I'm so proud of you. Do you do, which do you prefer, tap or modern? Because you do mm. both. Well, I like, we don't do this dance anymore. In um, It was me and my teddy bear. We don't actually do it anymore. That's so that was your favourite? That's why I liked modern. But now I think I might like tap. I'm not sure. Tap it is pretty cool. And you have got tap the dinkiest, tiniest little tap shoes I've ever seen. But the too. taps are harder. Taps are harder. You have to hear your taps. You have to hear the taps, don't you? So Zara's exam is actually, um, it's going to be a remote one. So I think it must be a fallout from COVID. I don't think they were ever doing it before COVID, but basically it's done like a normal exam with all the hair and got to be perfect and everything and standing very still and doing all the stuff. But the the teacher calls out what they've got to do. So normally, I mean, chat, stand out in the comments if you like, did dance when you were younger, but I remember going in and there'd be an examiner at a table and the dance teachers would get really stressed, you know, like keeping the examiners happy. But there's no examiner at a table. And um, Bella's done two exams, hasn't she? And this, you'll be doing mm. one. And although they are back to, there are like 
there is such a thing as examiners coming out this one is another filmed remote one so it's got to be done on a certain day and then you get one shot at it and then it's got to be uploaded but just interesting really that I guess it's just a fallout from COVID just another change of thing being done change the way that things mm. are being done but you are doing so well mummy's really proud of you well today I have a physio appointment and I cannot tell you how glad that I am I have needed this for a while, but apparently, something my, I didn't know until my physio told me, you can't have any kind of massage um, kind of treatment while you have got a virus, so obviously while I have flu, or just afterwards, because apparently it can reignite the virus. And I've been in absolute agony all down here, and it's kind of been going up. Pain's kind of here, it goes up and behind and into my head. Another interesting thing my physio taught me is, um, basically the pain is never where you think it's coming from, you know, so the pain, might be here but actually the problems here or whatever bodies are weird like that anyway i'm just looking forward to having a treatment and just feeling normal because it's got to the stage where it's so painful like i can't get in a comfortable position i'm getting wicked migraines it's just gonna feel nice to feel a bit better and hopefully feel human again because it's been a while since i felt between the flu and everything so i think this is kind of this is like gonna be the icing on the cake to just make me feel more like myself again Oh, well, I've got to say, oh, I cannot tell you how much better I feel now. Watch this. I'm turning my head and I'm not in agony. That is huge progress. That was, and she did warn me, um, pretty painful. Normally physios and like deep tissue massage is kind of good pain. <laughs> There was a bit where it was so painful I started laughing. I do have this rather bizarre reaction to pain when it's extreme pain. When I was in labour, I didn't scream and shout. My teeth chattered. Now that only ever happened, the other pain that happens when I threw my back out and my teeth chattered. And I laughed. So this pain, I don't know whether it's like I'm too British to want to shout and scream. So laughter's the way it comes out. It's kind of the way you might like laugh in a funeral where you're trying to hold yourself together and the emotion just spills out in a really inappropriate way. Anyway, it was painful when she did this particular thing and it made me laugh, so which my husband said, oh, she must be in pain. I was. Long story short, I now feel so much better. So if you are waiting for something to get fixed, if you have got something niggly that needs doing, you've got a bad neck, a bad back, foot, whatever it might be, something that is bugging you and impacting your quality of life like for example I have not been able to sleep without being in pain this is your sign from the universe or well, me at least to please come get it fixed you'll feel so much better and I know that if it was your children and they had something wrong you would go and get it sorted wouldn't you so you need to do the same for yourself if only that you can be healthy to look after them so I mean do it for yourself because you deserve to do it for yourself. But if you need the like mum guilt alleviated, then fixing this thing for you will make you a better parent. Anyway, thank you for coming to that TED talk. <laughs> so I am about to have a shower and wash my oh so full of dry shampoo hair. Um, but before that, I wanted to talk to you guys. Um, I've had so many questions lately about skincare and what I'm doing. And I thought the best thing to do with any products really, um, is I was going to start sharing my empties because I figured if I've used something all the way through enough to need a new one, and I'm desperate to order another one before I scrape the drags out of the last one, if I want something in backup, if I really can't live without it, then that's the kind of product I should be sharing. So um, previously, when I used to have um, eyelash extensions, which I don't have, I'm using my actual eyelashes and my mascara. I used to just use this, which was absolutely fantastic and absolutely fine. But I feel when you've got mascara, especially stubborn mascara, you need something that's really gonna really cut through it because especially waterproof mascara, I've always found a right pain in the backside to get off. So two things I've been using and absolutely loving. First empty is this Sephora Eye Makeup Remover. So yes, Sephora, if you've been watching YouTube um, and you're in the UK and you've watched, you know, people do makeup tutorials and things, they're always talking about Sephora, we finally have Sephora in the UK. I believe they're opening a store in London, but they've got an online store with just so many brands of things 
that we've not yet previously been able to get, including Sephora's own stuff. I am a Sephora affiliate, and they're great because you can pretty much get absolutely anything we've been able to get before, plus a lot more. Um, but the main thing I love about it is, first of all, they've given me a code, which I will put on screen, I will put in that blog post, which always goes in my videos, it links everything and down the description and stuff. Um, but the main thing I like about it is not just that one-off code, but you get to pick two brands as your favourites. And even if those brands are on sale, you get an additional 10% off those brands all the time. So think carefully before you pick your brands, because I think you can only change them annually. But if you've got like a makeup brand you always love, if you've got like a product like this, I think I might change one of my brands next time to this. I'll get on to that in a second, but um, extra 10% off is amazing. So the first product is an eye makeup remover and it's gonna get messy now. By the way, I'm sorry if the audio is appalling. I'm in my bathroom, the fan is on and it's probably really loud, so that's probably annoying. As you can see, this one is brand new because I've literally just used uh, that one. I have been using that every day and I've had it since probably October. And it's March now, so you know that's lasted pretty well. So let me know in the comments, are you like big on making sure you take your makeup off properly? When I was younger, I was really naughty with taking my makeup off. Wow, I cannot get this undone. And it's just so bad for your skin, isn't it? It leaves it all clogged and you're just gonna wake up feeling spotty. And I have, in recent years, been fanatical, no matter how tired I am, my makeup comes off. So one of the things I loved about having lash extensions is like no powder eyes, no dark, smudgy, can't get mascara off. Just hence why this, for just everything other than eye makeup, it's not that it irritates my eyes, it's just, it's not gonna cut through eye makeup like mascara as well as the rest of it. Anyway, this stuff, um, I just put on a cotton pad and I feel that it breaks down the mascara really well. The other thing, do you know what I love about not having eyelash extensions? Is that I can give my eyes a really satisfying rub to take off my mascara. You can't do that when you've got eyelash extensions stuck on. It's all about like being really gentle. Well, it's not actually, it's coming off on the pad. It's not actually going all over my face as much as sometimes it does. Anyway, so that is eye makeup remover. It is not a super expensive one but I've really been finding it very, very good. For the rest of my face, this is my empty, as you can see. I have used all of it because it's amazing. And it is called the Pharmacy Green Clean, like I'll link it from Sephora um, down below. I'm assuming you can get it other places other than Sephora. I've only ever seen it on Sephora. Um, anyway, you get a little spatula and it's literally, it's a balm like this, look. So, I use that much-ish, maybe that's a bit much. And you just literally rub it in your face and it just melts everything away. Um, this is where it gets messy because the rest of my eye makeup will come off with this. Anyway, so you can just really rub it in. This is, I guess I like this, this is very oily. I've got very dry skin, so I feel like this suits me. And then I just take, I mean, I could probably use one of these cheeky wipes. These are the wet wipes I used to use when the children were little. Stand off if you're one of the OG crowd that remembers my cloth nappy days. But these are, they're called cheeky wipes. They're amazing. I still use them every day. I use washing my face, children's hands, they say they're brilliant. I'm not gonna show me me in the shower, no one wants to see that, but. I normally just take one of these and take off the balm in the shower. So that I will take another to clean one of these and kind of take the rest off in the shower. But I just wanted to share those two empties because I recently repurchased them. As you can see, like this one isn't super cheap, but there is loads in it. That, especially if you're probably, I'm probably a bit enthusiastic with how much I put on my face, but if you are a bit more sparing with it, it would go further again. You can see like the makeup damage coming off my face. Um, there we go. And then that's me ready to, to get in the shower. 
Then of course, when I get out of the shower, there's like more skincare stuff I do. Um, let me know if you want to see a feel for kind of morning routine skincare, evening routine skincare, or just another, I, I haven't done a morning routine video for a while. I haven't done an evening routine for a really long time. So I think, um, yeah, do you want to see a, just a skincare routine or a full evening routine? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, I'm going to shower now. I've been having a bit of a think about maybe swapping my office around. It mostly works really, really well for me, but there are a few tweaks that I feel might be able to improve it. And since I spend a lot of time in here, because <laughs> I work from home, then optimizing your space to make it practical, functional, easy to use, easy to keep organized, but above all, a really nice place to be. It's kind of important. Anyway, let me flip the camera around and talk you through my thought process. So this is my office space as it is. Now, you will be familiar with this setup. If you've seen me do like sit down videos and things, then what I normally do is obviously sit here. I use this ring light as lighting. I shove the camera, sometimes the one I'm filming on now, sometimes another one on this tripod that extends and I stick it here facing this way. But I do have this window. A natural lighting is generally the best. And I wonder if I could be utilizing it better. Now, the problem with this chair to sit on and just point towards the window and stick my camera on here and start filming is it's really high back. And I just find it looks a bit weird in videos. And the other thing I sometimes do, if you've seen me like film facing towards the window, is I shove that over there in the corner and I sit on a little stool here. But then that is almost in frame. It's a bit weird. Now I had a lot of configurations of this room before we did this cupboard. I bought the little sofa and things. And this is kind of where I was homeschooling the children during the 2020 craziness. I wondered, should I try a different configuration? Let me know what you think before I maybe tear this place apart. Got to bear in mind that under there, that's the hub and stuff. So this computer plugs into there and it's also quite a lot of untidiness under there. So I could put the desk along here and that way if I'm doing like a live stream or whatever, I could just face the window. Now what I thought I'd do is get a different chair with a lower back or one that kind of suits the room better. I have ordered one, so it's from Amazon. I can return it, I guess, if it just doesn't suit, but that is an option. So I could put the desk along there and then I could just put my tripod on the desk and just film facing that way, that could work. Or if this new chair works, I could just put new said chair here and film like that. Or if the chair is small enough, I could tuck that in there, drag that across there for the purpose of filming. Do I try rejigging this all around? Maybe moving the desk across? Do I leave that there? Or do I put it in front of the calyx? Or do I put it over there? The only thing is I have got all these like clipboards and things around my desk that I use for planning my content and generally my to-do list. Is it worth a rejig or will this just getting a slightly smaller chair solve the problem? It's not a massive problem, but it's like a tweak. This room does work pretty well and this is not a major problem. I'm aware that these are tweaks, not overcoming major obstacles, but things like being able to set up and film quickly, shaves time off my filming, and therefore I can get other work done, and therefore I don't have to work as much on the weekends. And it, I feel like it's these little tweaks I can make in my life, be it in what I'm doing for work, what I can do for home, to save wasted time and then give me more time back. So it's giving myself the gift of time. And what better gift to give to oneself than the gift of time? So when this chair arrives, we'll see if it's any good, we'll see if it suits, and then maybe I'll move all the room around. It, it would probably be good to pull everything out and give it a good clean behind anyway, so we could do that. I don't know whether we'll do it later this vlog or I'll do a whole organizing the office video. I think I did a three part organizing the office once tonight, just literally pulling all of this out, sorting through it. And do you know what? Decluttering is never a one and done. I could probably do with pulling all of that out. I dread to think what's in all of there now. Some of it's organized and some of it is very much not organized and very dumped. Maybe it is at that time of the cycle where I need to look at this room again and pull everything out. Because honestly, let me know in the comments if you find the same. You can get a room so organized and looking fantastic. And then like Monica in France that has a Monica cupboard with things shoved, you get little pockets in your house where you're like, what do I do with this? I don't know, shove it in there for now. 
and then at some point you've got to go back around and do it all again. <laughs> Fun. So the chair has arrived. There are a few questions. The first question, will it match? Because really, if it's the same kind of grey, the same palette, tone, whatever, we've had so many problems with like trying to buy things for house and grey being too blue and just not going. So grey, not all greys are equal. I'm sure there are literally more than 50 shades of grey. Bella is playing Jack in the Box. Helpful, darling. I thought you were going to help Mummy build this chair. I was. You have, have to come. Are you going to help Mummy build the chair? Right, take the polystyrene and put it over helping. there for Mummy. He's not helping. No. So. Okay. Come on, help Mummy get this stuff out of the box. Oh, there we go. So that's the first question. The second oh. question is. Can we build this ourselves, Val? Is it easy peasy or do we need loads of tools? Ooh, look, it looks like a snowflake. Oh, no, right, I'll tell you what we need to do. Before we unpack it all, let's just take it's a chunk a of the chair. A chunk of the chair into the office and it's match it up and see yes. if it matches. Okay, Bells, here's the moment of truth. It's the, well, pretty mm. much the same. Is it the same though? Yeah, but like, it, Or is it totally it the wrong good. colour? Do you think? Yeah. You think it, it goes okay? It is bluey compared to that. Although Keep this is like, this velvety stuff is literally like, if you put it one colour, it's one colour. One way, see? It's like a different colour. Yeah. So. I think this is fine. You don't think it's too blue? No. Yeah, I don't know, Wells. I don't know. Even look. Is it not still too blue? What do we think? It's not going to be sitting on top of it like that. I don't know. Or we could just brush it up because it's a different colour. What colour is it if you brush it up? <laughs> that colour. That colour. Looks fine. Falling or, the, you're falling for the grey trap. We are, I know, we're just discussing this. Like, it's this one's a bit that, blue. It's the same as the rug we bought. Too blue. No, no but, Mummy, if you match it to the rug, then it looks a bit No, we better. bought a different rug before no, the look, lounge. It was no, no it's too blue. We could, however, send it back and get a pink one, which then doesn't matter because it's not having to try and be the same. What should we do, Belle? But I think this is fine. Do you? You think it's fine. Zara? What are your thoughts? I think it's lovely. Do you? Even yeah. though it's the wrong colour? anyways. It's the back of a chair. Mm. Is it comfy? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm doing my work. It's oh. fine, Mummy. Yeah. Do, 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 Just like do, Mummy. Do, do, do. <laughs> mummy, it's like, it's fine, you I think? think. You just want to build it. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it is too blue. Really great. It's a pain. So I think this one's going to go back and that's one of the reasons I do love buying things from Amazon actually. It's just so easy to buy things, return them, whatever. Anyway, the point I was making earlier about this chair, I like, I've got the window in front of me here. <laughs> I would need to close that. That's my um, airing cupboard behind me, if you see. This is my airing cupboard. All I've got to do is remember to close this door. Look how much neater that is, it hides all the junk. Anyway, so my point is, I could set my camera on the windowsill here and just shoot a video. I could move my desk in front of me, don't know, still haven't decided if I'm gonna do that. But I, this chair bugs me, it's being too high up. So while this one is going back, if that's as high as it is off the base, then that should be all you'll be able to see, shouldn't it? So it's basically behind my shoulders, not being too distracting, what do you think? And do I get it in pink? They have got a white option, but the white, if you look at this chair, it's like, I need to take um, one of those magic erasers to it um, because it's stained with denim from my jeans. So long story short, that's got to go back. Do I get the same one in pink? I have like a pink and grey office. I already have some pink cushions, but a pink in here. I do love my pink and grey, don't I? And am I going to do this big switch around or just leave it as it is? I don't know. I'm aware these are not big problems. They're more like, how do I make the room more pleasant pl uh, place to be for when I'm working and my work flow more productive. Problem is I'm the least decisive person in the world and I blame that on being a Libra. So it's nearly time to take the children to school. I haven't even bothered straightening my hair yet this morning because it is pouring outside so I will do that when I get back. But before we go, um, I need to measure their feet because they need some new 
um, shoes, specifically muffin boots is what they call them. It's like, like Ugg type boots and you use them all the time, don't you, for like when you're going to dance? Muffin say. boots. I don't know why they're called muffin boots. Why do they I know, because they like look muffin. like a muffin. The top looks like a muffin. Right, okay, fair enough. Muffin and boots. And muffin colour. Well, they had um, those amazing, really sparkly ones from Primark and they were about six pounds. <laughs> Um, if you see any, grab them, buy them, even if they are bigger sizes than your children have. I wish I bought all the sizes because they're really good. Anyway, long story short, I need to look for a replacement for those. Couldn't find the ones I wanted in Primark, so I need to measure your feet colours. Now, these um, device thingies, I had to buy two. So this is the like standard size you get for, for most school age children. But Zara's got such teeny tiny feet. I, now, I don't know, maybe you will have grown out of this one. but no, when I think it's a perfect. Well, having been a mother for a trillion years, I only actually got measure your children's feet at home devices in during lockdown when obviously going places was like, oh no, we don't want to go anywhere and get any diseases. Um, but especially when, um, like when William was younger, especially he hated having his feet measured, like hated it, hated it, hated it. It was a really traumatic experience. None of you were that keen on it when you were little, but William, really really just did despise it so you That's are at the thing. top end of the baby foot <laughs> anyway we're gonna measure your feet now so that i can actually Aww. order you some feet but if you have not got one of these especially if you've got if you struggle with time physically getting to shoe shops or if you want to be able to order things online or if your children really hate the feet measuring thing can't recommend highly enough don't know why it took me so long to get one so as i think you were at the top end stand up for me darling top end of this one and then what we do is you put in there's a gauge on the website oh, it's my toe hurts. i know we're gonna you finally graduated up to the bigger one baby right put your foot in there and then <laughs> getting down to the floor to explain so then you enter the length and width that you you get from the gauge and press calculate size so let's see what size you are size. right <laughs> okay stand up for me darling okay that foot is 170 long, so you enter that in there, 170, and width of points at mm, 130. Mm. And that puts you at a size 10H. That big. No, that's that's actually tiny. Do the other foot just to be sure they're the same size. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Zara's a 10H. <laughs> Bella, your turn. Come on, darling. Get your foot in here. Now, you're, you've had a massive growth foot recently. You've gone really tall, so I'd imagine your feet have grown quite a lot. Hey. I think my, my feet are different sizes. You think they're different sizes? Yeah. Quite possibly. That does happen a lot as you're growing. Okay. I'm sure that's the same with me. Um, okay, so... On my side, it's a one. Thank you, Zara. Oh. Excellent helping there. Okay. Um, we've got 220 yeah, by right 160. There. Oh, a 3F, Belle, 3F. That's teeny. Size three is like, you can actually get um, grown up shoes. But you can also get the biggest size. You can pictures. get, you've got lots of choices because you've got, there you go, on the other foot, the other shoe. Wait, other wait, wait, I yeah, can get, get kids and adults. You could get adult shoes. Yay. Or you could get grown up. Well, you could get I'm probably going to be like size 4 if Bella's 220, hungry. yeah, it's the same. 220, your feet are actually very similar size, darling. Wills, no. bring me your feet. Yeah, I'm probably Woo! like size 4. Probably a 4. Like... you be like... No, Will's well, my feet are only size 6. Let me help you with that. Oh, thanks, Oz. Mm. Okay, um... Oh, size 5D, Will. Size 5! Oh my goodness, yeah. Mummy's only size 6. Yikes. Yeah. Okay, let's I try the other one. I'm size 4. I know. Okay, we're gonna need to get you some massive, massive shoes. Yeah. Come on, put your other foot. I didn't know that. <laughs> wow. Oh, Zara. Okay. Let um, me help you there. See the widest bit. Same. So yeah, got same. One okay. <coughs> wow. Okay. So we need some size 10H. <laughs> Bella needs 3F, and William, I don't think you 5D it says, but I think by the time you get to that size, you're not really even in width sizes. <laughs> okay, I can now at least I'm armed <laughs> with the tools. <laughs> to order some some shoes online, at least to try it. Anything we order online can, can be sent back, you know, so that's, it's a case of order things, try them, send them back if they're no good. But at least I've got a starting point now. But those are definitely bigger sizes for Will and Bella than I was anticipating. And little teeny tiny feet for little teeny tiny Zara. <laughs> she, I think she's just doing me the, the service of, you know, I'm struggling to accept I no longer have a baby by staying really teeny, aren't you? Oh, you're staying teeny. <laughs> so that's the children safely deposited in school.
school. It is pouring with rain and it did get pretty wet so I've just come home and straightened my hair. There was literally no point in doing it before I go out in this kind of fog type rain that we're having right now. So I've had a, a few of you asking, um, especially over on Instagram um, and in the comments of videos and things, how I'm doing after the flu. Um, I think I was still struggling quite a lot with feeling like myself in my last video where I was kind of getting over the flu. The flu symptoms, the very first symptoms started a month ago now where I was kind of losing my voice and then, let me see when did it was about three days after I started losing my voice I had fevers for a week solidly. And then for that week after the fevers had gone, I just felt so rough. Like it was hurting every time I was breathing in. I wasn't sure if it was my chest or my ribs or whatever, but I think it was just, cause it's eased off now. I think it was just like, I pulled all the muscles round my ribs. I just felt so rough. I am now feeling a lot more human, just so much better. Over the last week or so, I have finally got back to doing some gentle exercise, some yoga, nothing too intense, but I'm finally now getting to the stage where I don't feel ill anymore, and that is a huge, huge thing to not feel ill anymore. I just feel kind of slightly unfit, you know what I mean? Like, I need to get my fitness levels back, my energy levels back, but I don't feel ill anymore, which is amazing. Honestly, so good. Anyway, I've got some editing I need to go and do, but first, I've got something that I need to show you. Now, as you may or may not know, um, I have a Disney channel as well. I film like Disney parks, vlogs, we're going on a Disney cruise later this year, which is exciting. Um, but on those kind of days out and theme park vlogs, I use a number of different cameras for filming on rides, filming on water attractions, that kind of thing, um, that I can't use the camera I'm filming on now because um, it would get wet or damaged and just isn't suitable for the job. Before I did any of the Disney Channel stuff, um, I did used to film a lot of like mini break and UK based theme park vlogs and things, which was so much fun. And in 2019, which is the year I relaunched my channel, um, and I bought this, which is my, my first GoPro, a Hero 7. We filmed loads. We did so many different trips and things, and I got loads of use out of this. And I want to get back to doing that on this channel. So if you enjoy the Disney vlogs, we're gonna be bringing back some of that kind of UK day out theme parky stuff on this channel. We have got a UK theme park mini break booked for the Easter holiday. So guess, Place your bets down in the comments um, which UK theme park you think we're going to be visiting. But anyway, long story short, this GoPro, which I had in 2019 and has been, you know, used and abused, decided last on our last Disneyland Paris trip to become a little bit glitchy. I decided it was time before our next kind of mini break theme park trip to upgrade. So I've got this now, which is the Hero Black 11. So the old one is a seven and this is an 11. I have just unboxed this. I actually bought the Creator Edition combo. Now this may or may not be interesting to you guys. So apologies if it's kind of not your bag, but um, I gen the general messages I get from you lovely lot are when I talk about camera gear and stuff and the kind of behind the scenes of my channel a little bit more. Some of you are interested because you may want to do YouTube. Some of you are interested because you may want to just capture like really sweet video and photos of your kids and your families and things. And some of you are just interested in how I put it all together. So if you're any of those people, then this should be interesting. If not, apologies and you can skip to the next bit. So we're gonna do a little test. This is me just holding the GoPro in my hand. And what is the audio like? This is like the standard linear mode, which just kind of looks normal. I'm gonna show you some other bits and pieces this does, but this is the GoPro audio. What do we think? Is that any good? Um, and I'm going to turn it around um, and see what the audio sounds like from the back. Any good at all? Any good? Now the big difference with my old GoPro is you can see there's like a front facing screen, which obviously is really handy. So I can like see myself in the GoPro. So if I'm actually vlogging, I can see that I'm actually in the shot. The other thing that I've got with it is this creator combo thing, which adds a light and a microphone. So I'm gonna try 
that out and we'll see if that sounds any different. So to um, slot it in, I've got to take the door off the side apparently. Sounds a bit nerve wracking, like I'm breaking it. Oh, is that coming off? Oh, there it is. And then you kind of got to snap it off. I don't like that because I feel like that's the kind of thing I will lose in my bag, but never mind. That's what we've got to do. Oh, there we go. So that should snap into there. Then you can attach it onto this, which is the Volta. This thing has got a battery in the grip so that if I'm out all day and I can't tell you how many batteries I go through, I think I've got something like 10 to 12 batteries for this camera that I'm filming on now. But when I'm vlogging all day, I probably go through at least six of those which you know is a lot. So, but apparently you can film for four hours continuously on this with this battery setup, which will be massive for me because obviously four hours isn't all day, but you press stop in between, don't you? And four hours of footage is quite a lot. So let's turn this thing back on. This thing's called a media mod and it's got a microphone, which should be better than the audio from the original GoPro. And it's also got this light so I can shine light on my face like so. We'll take the take the filter thing off and it'll add a bit more light. So that'll diffuse the light and make it a bit softer. This is the audio coming from this external microphone here from within the media mod. And then the idea is if I plug this stringy thing in, um, then that will also power the GoPro and charge the battery within it. So what do we think? Does this sound better? Or did the previous audio without this media mod speaker thing sound better? Okay, now I'm gonna show you something else a bit cool. So this is now filming in like this weird big square thing. It might look a little bit fisheye, like I might look a bit warped compared to how I would look filming with my standard camera. However, the benefit of this for me, and if you've ever seen me vlogging in real life, especially in theme parks, you'll see me and sometimes I'm like, I'm filming on my big camera with one hand and I've got my phone with the other hand because if you think about it, everything I film for YouTube, and this is something I've struggled to get through to my husband, everything I film for YouTube has got to be that way, like a TV, it's like you're watching it on a TV in landscape. And everything you film for Instagram or YouTube shorts or reels goes this way, it's vertical. So the beauty of filming with this weird big square thing on this new GoPro is that I can crop it this way for YouTube or I can crop it this way for Instagram or shorts or whatever I need to do. And then it does have this other really cool setting which I'm not exactly sure how much I'll use it but I'm gonna show you anyway because I just think it's amazingly cool. Now there's another mode on here and we're back in kind of the normal, not the big square mode, in the, the wide mode for the purpose of this. And this, let's see if I can get this right. So I'm gonna turn the GoPro upside down, okay? I'm gonna spin it. And the question is, this should do a horizon lock, whereas even though the GoPro's gone upside down, it has locked the horizon in place. That's pretty clever if you ask me. So let's just do a little walk around test, shall we? We're walking around, walking around my house. If I jog, How's it doing? We've got this media mod audio. Is it pretty stable? Is it pretty stable? Shall we, shall we turn it round? Okay, we're walking around my house, walking quite quickly, jogging around my house. Walking quite fast. Now, if that is pretty stable, this is quite a small setup. It's quite an easy, way to get started. Obviously until I watch this footage back, I don't know if it's any good, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on how this compares because it's a really small setup that will be quite robust, especially for like day out vlogging, theme parks, things like that. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how it looks and sounds. Because at the end of the day, you guys are the ones that watch and I want to make my vlogs as good as they can possibly be for you guys. So your opinions are always valuable to me. Back from the school run, and that's why I'm looking slightly disheveled. It's still this kind of misty, gross rain that is coming from not just the sky, but from all around. And I've had enough of it, quite frankly. I'm done. I'm ready for summer. Bring on the flip-flops. Summer, come back, please. Anyway, I wanted to just um, 
touch base on a few things. You know, sometimes in my videos, I'm like, I'm gonna try this and report back. Okay, so the first one, this jumper. I'm still not sure about it. Let me just put you guys down here. So this was a Primark find, if you watched a recent Come Shop With Me and haul. It is a bit short. I keep fiddling with it. And I do feel like maybe it cuts me off a funny way. Um, but I love the top of it, I love the colour. So if Primark could just make this exact same jumper, but a teensy bit longer, then I'd be happy. And I decided against going back for the orange version because I like this, but I don't love it. And I did decide that the orangey one was just gonna make me look a teensy bit ill because I am a winter pale at the moment. So that was one thing I wanted to report back on. What were the other things I needed to talk about? Ah, I know, these skinny whips. So in my, it wasn't B&M, Home Bargains, for dear, see, I'm gonna have to eat one of these now just to show you. Terrible. See the things I do for you guys. So you know I love skinny whips. And I've tried so many of the flavors, but the strawberry ones are amazing, the mint ones are amazing, the rest are all just meh. This one is not quite up there with the strawberry and the mint, but it's pretty nice. It kind of, mm, it's got Milky Way kind of vibes. So other than the strawberry and the mint, this is my favorite. I do like it. And it's called the double chocolate one. Gets a thumbs up from me. My biggest problem with skinny whip though, is it's so Moorish. I just want to eat the whole box. Office chair update that we talked about earlier in the vlog. The colour was just all wrong. It would have bugged me that it was just totally a bluey grey. Like, I like the colour on its own. I just didn't like that it was the wrong palette, tone, whatever, to, for that chair. So that would have bugged me. That is in the boot of my car to take to the post office and go back to Amazon. I have, however, ordered a new chair so that when I am sitting, filming a sit down video, um, like it's a lower back one, so it'll be below my shoulders and I won't, I don't know, I just, things bug me. And I think they probably bug me more than they bug you guys because if you're watching a 20 minute video, you watch it for up to 20 minutes, maybe not all of it. If I'm watching a 20 minute video, I'm staring at it all day, hours and hours and hours and hours. So probably the details like that bug me more than they would bug you. Um, but it's just kind of this incremental trying to improve the videos with using, you know, the right cameras and stuff. So that GoPro, um, hopefully for filming kind of theme park footage and things. And I de I've had a look at the footage. GoPros are still not up to like this camera for indoor lower light situations. But I know for outside, even my last GoPro filmed really nice kind of crispy footage they're just they still have limitations indoors so I would say that from looking at that footage but yeah a lower back chair that kind of slots under the desk a bit better oh and I've had a brainwave about the office let me flip the camera and explain so as I mentioned I was thinking about moving this desk to along here so that I could put the camera on it and film you know with the light of the window but few problems with that. First of all, directly under here, we've got all the hub and just lots of messiness. The other issue is I've got these plug sockets on the wall, so they'd just be like floating in the middle of the wall, which would be a bit weird. So I came up with a brainstorm. I can move this desk along here and then buy one of the cheap, basic IKEA table desks to go there to make like an L-shaped desk. And I think that could be a really good solution because it's gonna give me more workspace. So you can see behind me, I've kind of got, I've got my big computer exporting one thing, the laptop's doing something else. I have a lot of stuff on my desk, so when I just wanna sit and write something, I haven't really got much space. So this solution, I think, I've measured it, I think it'll work really well. So I think by the looks of it, one desk will come to here and then the second desk will probably come to about here and I'll just have to put that flat into the corner. So this imaginary desk we can't see yet will be like a clear desk and then I'll leave my, my big computer on that one. So that means we need to do a little Ikea haul. Would you like to see that video? And then after that we'll be an organizing or reorganizing the office video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the bell and do those YouTube things. You do not miss any of that. Click on video on screen now. I'll see you guys over there. Bye.